Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Waffle, where we basically just give you a roundup of everything that's happened over the past week. I'm again joined by Callum and Ashley, and for the first time, Kyle. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm a Leicester fan. Kyle is a name, and you know, we talk about Leicester and uh, Vardy today. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we will get to that uh, eventually. So, uh, first, I'm going to go through all the Premier League results. And then uh, as we go along, we'll go through the main talking points from the league. So starting off on Monday night, Burnley managed to get a 1-0 win away at Crystal Palace. Uh, and then on the Tuesday night, Manchester United managed to get a 3-0 win away at Brighton. And I believe actually has a lot to talk about Manchester United's attack. Yeah, I've got a lot to talk about Mason Greenwood because Mason Greenwood is a different animal since the, since the restart. Uh, two, uh, he scored one in this game. I think he set up Bruno Fernandes for the second. He's such an integral part of the team now and obviously replacing J Dan James on the right wing. Because Dan James, uh, as much as I do like John James, he just runs into space. Dan James. <laughs> John, <laughs> he just doesn't do anything with the space. He just runs in a straight line, doesn't do anything with the ball. Whereas you've got Bruno, uh, Mason Greenwood, who uh, uh, he gets assists, scores goals, uh, holds up the play. And in this game, it was more of the same. Bruno Fernandes getting two as well. Bruno Fernandes has been a different monster since this restart as well. What a game this was, and uh, a, a good result in the in the race for the top four. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then on the Wednesday, uh, we had Arsenal who battered Norwich four nil. Uh, speaking of Arsenal, they managed to tie down two players to long term contracts. Carpi and Tilkin. Yeah. So Saka and uh, Martinelli signed new contracts for Arsenal this week, and I think that's great for them, considering that they are kind of shy to like, spend money on players and try to grace. So I think it's good that they've got two long-term contracts for two young players that prove that they can play. I mean, especially Saka as well, him being English. I think that him going through the ranks of Arsenal, I think it's got a good future for him now. He's settled, settling down at Arsenal for another five years, four years, whatever it is. And he could be well going on. You know, he could be, we could see him at the Euros next summer, you know. And Martinelli as well, he's shown that he's he's got skills, he scored against Chelsea in the Cup, I think it was this year. He's also scored a few, few more goals. I think he could go out on loan the next season, potentially. But yeah, I think that's really, really important that Arsenal got those um, two contracts signed. And yeah, so uh, yeah, Arsenal managed to tie those two down, which is probably very important uh, for them. Newcastle managed to get a 4-1 win away at Bournemouth, uh, Bournemouth nearing the nearing relegation. Oh, and yeah. then uh, Everton managed to pick up three points at home to Leicester. Yeah. Uh, Carl, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, Very Everton nice managed well. to beat the um, Leicester City in a really gruelling match for us, actually. You know what? I thought that Everton were really lucky to get the win. You know, they had a VAR, a massive, huge VAR talking port again with a penalty, which was very harsh. And then uh, Ian Acho scored an exquisite goal as well to get one back in the second half. <laughs> and I uh, thought that we might get something back there, you know, but turns out that small club Everton just managed to grasp it again, you know. <laughs> We've well, got more know. trophies than you've got years in the top flight. Was you born? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Oh, I was actually yeah. born in 1937. Yeah, but oh, yeah. you know what? I respect um, respect Everton a lot. That uh, and you know, fair play to them. But they're not even in the top half of the table, so that's why I don't worry about that fixture. You know, I worry about right. the next one. You should worry when that fixture. Easy, you know, but no, no worries. Right, okay. We're going to move on. Well. <laughs> right, we're going to move on. Uh, West Ham managed to pick up three points at home to Champions League chasing Chelsea. Uh, although Carl will like that result. Uh, West Ham. Oh, yeah. and, uh, well, very controversial with VAR. Thomas Suchek getting his first goal, well, first goal, uh, disallowed because uh, Mike Antonio apparently got in the way. As you can see, Ashley does not agree with that decision at all. Nah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but it doesn't matter because West Ham managed to get the win. Um, Lucic finally got his goal as well. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, so on Thursday, we then had Sheffield United. Uh, poor start since re since the restart after lockdown, but they managed to pick up three points at home to not a not very good Tottenham side at all. Um, yeah. With Mourinho not being very happy at all, um, they claimed three one win. And then we probably had arguably, or no, not arguably, the biggest game of the week, Manchester City versus Liverpool. And Manchester City absolutely battered Liverpool 4-0. Ashley, can you talk us through that? 
It was an absolute shambles by Liverpool that did not turn up at all. Like, you could tell they've been drinking, celebrating to the title win. Mm. But yeah, uh, Man City were just absolutely dominant in that game. Phil Foden had a blinder of a match, um, obviously. Uh, Raheem Sterling being, being, being brought down by Joe Gomez, which is a massive talking point. Which it was it was a definite foul. Um, that sort of set the tone for the whole game. Raheem Sterling running at Joe Gomez. Uh, Liverpool, uh, Liverpool just being being uh, on the bottom of the of the uh, taking order there. Uh, Man City absolutely ruthless. Should have got a fifth, but it was disallowed. Uh, yeah, it was up. It was an absolute uh, shambles by Liverpool, and Man City deserved the win. You can watch that on stream, by the way. We've got we we uh, live stream that. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to see our reactions to that, um, then yeah, please check that out. Um, so then we move on to the Saturdays. There are no games on the Friday. Uh, Brighton managed to get a 1 0 win and wait at Norwich through Leandro Cossard with Daniel Parker basically confirming that he has no hope in Norwich. To buy Aaron the Iniesta Moy, uh, Masterclass one. Indeed. And then uh, at the King Power, Leicester beating Crystal Palace 3 0 and yeah, someone. Finally a win. Yeah. yeah, someone joining the Centurions. Oh, Jamie Vardy is a 100th Premier League goal. And I was, I've never been so proud of him, to be fair. Like, this, his story is just. Unbelievable, and he he missed three big chances as well before that, and he was like, getting frustrated. And then Saka runs runs the ball out and trips, and Harvey Barnes puts it on the plate. And Vard, the relief for Vard and the relief for Leicester as well to get the second goal, and Vard to get his hundredth, and then to go on and get the hundred and first goal with a vintage Vardy run down, uh, run past uh, the last defender, slot it past the goalie. I thought, yeah, great performance from Leicester. And I think that that um, gives them a lot more confidence to go on and hopefully, you know, request for the Champions League and have the Chelsea team first step it up and, you know, keep something up. But it's, yeah, don't know what's going to happen with that fourth spot, man. That's the third. Yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be very tough, uh, especially on the last day of the season as well. That's yeah. the, the games then. Is ridiculous. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, speaking of one of those uh, people contesting for that Champions League spot as well, Manchester United again managed to get a 5 2 win. Over Bournemouth, seven goals and a very controversial game with VAR. Um, Ashley, you can talk us through that one as well. Yeah, well, first first ten minutes we were first ten fifteen minutes we were not on not on the game at all. Uh, Junior Stanislas putting it through Harry Maguire's legs and then slotting it near post. De Gea could have done better. You got to argue that, but uh, it was it, it was a, it was well worth goal by Junior Stanislas. And then we just turned on the pressure straight after that. Uh, Mason Greenwood scoring the first goal for us. Absolute scorcher. That guy does not have a weak foot. Um, then I think it was we, a penalty. Marcus Rashford stepped up and took it. Uh, Martial scored an absolute blinder before the before the break as well. And then I think it was three minutes into the second half. Eric Bailly was on the edge of the box, tried to chest it down, hits his shoulder, <laughs> and it gets, it's, it gets given as a penalty to... Bournemouth, Joshua King steps up and slots it past the Gea, but um, we step we we stepped it up. After that, we were not letting anything get past our defence, and we were absolutely ruthless in attack. Uh, scary man, a scary yeah, team. Uh, Mason Greenwood scoring another, and Bruno Fernandes getting a free kick, which was disallowed at first because Nemanja Matic, Nemanja Matic's foot was offside. Uh, but yeah, absolute dominant, another uh, win by the three goal margin. So. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so that boost Man United hopes to get in the Champions League. I think they're ruthless at the moment, and I think they're definitely in contention. Uh, then I'm moving on to arguably one of the most boring two 0 wins I've ever seen: Wolves versus Arsenal. So <laughs> boring the entire game. But uh, Arsenal managed to get to a two 0 win. Saka scoring a really good half. Great goal to half celebrate. It's volley. great week, really. Yeah, uh, half volley or half or volley of one of them. But uh, it was in the top corner, and then Lacazette yeah. managed to finish it off late on. And Did not then, uh, in, that at all. Uh, Wolves have been great. Yeah, Wolves have been great. I'm surprised Arsenal won that. And then in the evening, Chelsea managed to get a comfortable 3 0 win at home to Watford. Then we move on to the uh, Sunday today, where we're filming uh, on the 5th of July. Uh, Burnley managed to get a 1 1 draw at home to Sheffield United earlier on. John Egan getting a volley. Uh, good for you, actually, to get it in for his first ever Premier League goal, I believe. Then Newcastle got a 2 2 draw at home to West Ham. Um, West Ham managing to get a point, which is really important for them. And then Liverpool being Aston Villa 2 0. 
Although Aston Villa are arguably the better team for the game. So uh, Liverpool starting to be shaky. And then as we are talking about this, we're literally at half time during the game. Southampton are currently leading Manchester City 1 0 through Jay Adam, which was a beautiful uh, 40 yard goal, I believe. Um, Zinchenko lost it in the middle of the park and he hit it first time and curved it in and over Edison. So, uh, yeah, so that's the end of the, so that's the Premier League for this week. Uh, so, we'll move on to the Championship. Right, so in the Championship, uh, Tuesday, we had Leeds bottling it again. Uh, not even beating bottom of the league in Luton. Uh, they drew 1 1. So, uh, luckily, they are still a couple of points clear as of uh, uh, Sunday. But, um, yeah, uh, Brentford managed to get a 3 0 win away at Reading. Absolute shambolic performance by Reading. Terrible. Um, Great hat trick as well from um, yeah. was it Ben, ben, ben Ron? Uh, no, that was that was on that was yesterday, uh, which we'll get to in a bit. And then uh, <laughs> uh, Wigan, actually speaking of Wigan, they managed to get a three 0 win at home to Stoke, which continued their impressive form. And then on Wednesday, Derby got a very impressive win away at Preston for a typical Wayne Rooney free kick. Um, and then West Brom managed to get a three 0 win away at Sheffield Wednesday uh, to keep Leeds and Brentford on their toes. Uh, and then Thursday, Hull managed to get a last-minute winner at home to Middlesbrough uh, to boost the relegation home. I believe like every team that's been 22nd going into a game with one like, since the restart. It's something ridiculous like that. Uh, and then we move on to Saturday. Saturday was a very important day. So we had the East, Min- Mist- East Midlands derby between Derby and Nottingham Forest. Um, I believe Joe Lolly scored early on, um, but only for... In injury time, Martin Redcorn to get sent off and then have Chris Martin score in the 96th minute to get the equaliser for Derby. So, uh, Derby, I believe, is still unbeaten since the restart, playing very well. Leeds managed to get a 3-1 win away at Blackburn. Calvin Phillips with a beautiful free kick into the top corner. Uh, Brentford managed to get a 3-0 win at home to Wiggins. Sorry, Ben Rama getting the hat-trick yeah. in that Bless game. Yeah, I believe that's the. He's the only player this season actually to get two hat tricks. Uh, Cardiff managed to get a one 0 win away at Bristol City in the seven side derby, which then led to Lee Johnson being sacked. He was at the club for four and a half years. He was the longest serving manager in the championship, and now he's gone. Personally, I felt that was not needed. Oh. Now they probably should have left it till the end of the season. But um, yeah, I, th- I don't think they were getting any better. Uh, they're now like 11th and 9 points off the playoff, so I doubt they're going to get it, get in there at all. Uh, Fulham managing to get a 95th minute winner at, at home to Birmingham. Stoke managing to get a 4-0 win at home to Barnsley, which boosted uh, their survival hopes. And then Reading managing to get a 5-0 win away at Luton. Yaku Mate scoring four goals, meaning he's the only player in the top four divisions of England so far this season to score four in a game. And then on the Sunday, which is today, uh, West Brom managed to get a 4-2 win at home to Hull to keep the uh, promotion chase alive. But League 1 and League 2 also aren't done yet. League 2 on Monday had the playoff final in which Northampton absolutely battered Exeter. I mean, Exeter are still somehow stuck in League 2. Honestly, I don't know how... I'll say I don't know how they're still in League 2. They've been in like three playoff finals in the last four years and they're still there. I don't know, but Northampton... Blew them away. And then on, I believe it was Friday. Yeah, Friday, Portsmouth managed to get a 1-1 draw at home to Oxford. Um, and Fleetwood losing 4-1 at home to Wickham. That game, the first 15 minutes, Wickham were already 2-1 up. And there was a couple of red cards in that game as well. It was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, really good watch that one. Um, so I believe the next League One playoffs, they are, yeah, they are tomorrow on Monday, 6th of July. Um, so that'll decide who's going to Wembley um, in a couple of weeks' time. So now we're going to head into Europe with Bayern having a very impressive week. Um, Gaff, can you tell us about their DFB Pokal Cup win? Yeah, Bayern have continued to dominate Germany with a DFB Pokal win to, you know, give it a double and give them the chance for that elusive treble, which could happen. As they are, I mean, they are my odds on favourites to win the Champions League, so we'll see how that goes. Um, they were able to take an early 2 0 win, and after that, you know, Bender was able to get a goal in the 63rd minute, but there was nothing they could do. You know, they made it 3 0 in 59, and then Lewandowski ended it in the 89th minute with Havertz getting, you know, a little 
penalty in the 95th to soothe the pain. But it was a typical performance from buying 14 shots, seven on target, 50% possession, you know. Usually we don't see teams able to keep possession with Bayern, which, you know, shows a good sign for Leverkusen, but they just, um, they weren't able to keep up with the quality of Bayern. They were just too good. And as they've proven all season, they are just by far the best team in Germany. But speaking of Bayern Munich, Ashley, I believe you've got some big news about Bayern Munich for us. Yes, so obviously uh, Leroy Sane has been unsettled at Manchester City for a while now. Uh, it was announced yesterday, day before yesterday, that he has uh, completed his move to back to uh, Bayern Munich uh, for, 40, for around £45 million. Uh, Obviously, Sane got injured at the start of this season, Community Shield, so he's missed the majority of the season. It's a bit harsh that Pep Guardiola has not kept him in the team since then. But um, he's, a, he's a really quality player, and I think Bayern have done well to get uh, that quality player for this amount of money. I think it was always inevitable that Sammy was going to go back to Germany and it was going to be Bayern. Yeah. yeah, I think that was always inevitable. Um, so we'll now head over to Italy, where uh, there are a couple of key results in the Serie A, but I am going to start off just quickly. Um, Atraf Hakimi has left Real Madrid after a very successful season at Dortmund and he's moved to Inter Milan. Callum, can you tell us about that? Of course, I can. I believe it was for about £45 million. Um, Hakimi has made the move over, which is going to devastate Dortmund fans, as they were probably, until this rumour came up, they were the top team to get him quite easily. But, you know, Inter came in with the big money, and Real Madrid handled it smart by not giving him a buyout clause on the loan deal, so they could make Dortmund get in a bidding war. And it looks like Antonio Conte has got the ideal right wing back for that system. Which, you know, this is really going to help Inter Milan. Hakimi is, you know, great on offence, great on defence. He's extremely quick. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I really think he's going to, um, he's going to be able to punish play. He's going to be able to punish fullbacks. He's going to be able to punish wingers with his ability to dribble and his ability to defend. And I believe this could help Inter Milan's title hopes next year. But we're going to, you know, to stay in Italy, we'll go over to the Serie A fixtures. Um, starting off, um, Lazio were able to get a 2 1 win over Torino with Immobile and Parolo scoring for Lazio and Bellotti for Torino. Then we move on to Juventus smashing Genoa 3 1 with Dybala, Ronaldo, and Douglas Costa on the score sheet. Bologna mm-hmm. drew 1 0 with Cagliari. Inter Milan destroyed Brescia 6 0. Ashley Young, Alexis Sanchez, Di Ambrosio, Gagliardini, Ericsson, and Candreva in the absolute smashing that Brescia take, leaving them still bottom of the table with only 18 points. Um, Lecce lost to Sampdoria 2 1. Sassuolo beat Florentina 3 1. Spal and Mil- in- Inter. AC Milan drew 2 all. Hellas Verona beat Parma 3 2. Atalanta with a huge 2 0 win over Napoli with Chelsea Loney, Mario Pasalic, and German winger Gossen is able to get the two goals. Udinese crushed Roma's hopes of maybe finishing fifth by beating them 2 0, as some of the teams have started to crawl up close to uh, Dybala, Quadrado, Rad- Quadrado, Ronaldo, and G- I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that, um, all scored in the game against Torino 4-1, the final goal, the fourth goal being a own goal. And I believe this was the game where Ronaldo scored the free kick, if I'm correct. I may yeah. not be there, but I'm pretty sure that's the game he scored the free kick. Um, Sassuolo picked up a 4-2 win over Lecce. Inter Milan destroyed Lazio which probably destroys Lazio fans, as you know, they are pushing for the title and maybe this is really going to hurt the chances with Chanaloglu, Ibrahimovic and Rebic on the score. Um, Inter Milan also dropped a game, losing 2-1 to Bologna with Juara and Barrow on the score sheet for Bologna and Lukaku on the goal sheets for Inter. Um, currently, in what was half-time when I last checked, um, Sampdoria are beating Spal 3-0 and Atalanta are beating Cagliari 1-0 with a goal from Muriel. Which, if I switch over to the table here, if Atalanta are able to win this game, they will be only one point behind Inter Milan in third. Juventus are now officially, I believe, seven points ahead of Lazio in second place. And Inter, uh, AC Milan and Napoli are now only... Um, AC Milan two points, then Napoli three points behind fifth place Roma for that um, Europa League spot. And that is all we've got for Italian football. OK, so if, uh, we then head over to Spain, where Lionel Messi scored his 700th goal, and it was only fitting it had to be a Penenka. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so we really appreciate him doing that. Subscribe to the Penenka podcast. Yes, he definitely meant it. We hired him to do that. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Callum, do you want to tell us more about that? 
Yeah, if we jump into um, La Liga, that game was, I believe it was a, I mean, I think it was a game that ended up being, it, well, no, here it is. I believe it was the two-all draw with Atletico Madrid, which, you know, Messi able to pick up that Penang Capella if they're seven which of God, but, you know, it wasn't a sweet game for Messi as Barcelona's defence was shambolic, giving Sol two penalties to draw the game. Uh, Diego Costa scored an own goal, but if we keep if we stay in Spain, Hatafe were able to beat Sociedad 2 1. Mallorca destroyed Celta Vigo 5 1. Sevilla beat Leganes 3 0. Granada beat Alaves 2 0. Athletic Club uh, were able to beat Valencia 2 0 with a Raul Garcia brace. Villarreal were able to beat Real Betis 2 0 with a, Mar- a Gerard Moreno brace. And Betis had a red card in Fekir, one of their key players. Uh, Sociedad beat Espanyol 2 1. Osasuna beat Ibar 2 0. And Real Madrid, in a quite an interesting game, beat Hatafe 1-0 with Sergio Ramos scoring a winning penalty, giving him, making him the first defender since Fernando Hierro in 93-94 to score 10 goals in the league. And then if we move a little bit further to what happened today, um, just to talk about that, to link it here, Ramos scored another penalty in a win against Athletic Club, which, you know, Ramos is getting these goals and I believe he is on 11 league goals now, but this isn't a good time for Real Madrid if they're having to squeak past teams like Hatafe and Athletic Club, I know Athletic Club are quite an established team, but they really should be handedly beating these teams. But for the rest of the fixtures, Athletic Club Madrid beat Mallorca 3 0. Celta Vigo and Betis drew 1 0, and Granada and Valencia drew 2 0. That's all for Spanish football. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I believe that is it. I believe that is it for uh, today's episode of the Weekly Waffle. Thank you to Callum, Ashley, and Kyle for joining me. Uh, today uh, we do also want to say a massive thank you for 100 subscribers again uh, we really hey. appreciate it and you can expect a crossbar challenge coming soon um, so <laughs> yeah so which unfortunately I can't make considering I can't, can't get out of Leicester but, yeah. Yeah, but we will have uh, we'll have everyone I believe everyone else that's been on um, so that will be good so yeah and make sure to like uh, and subscribe uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram and also listen to us on Spotify and uh, yeah so uh, we'll see you on Thursday for our first ever tier list video um, thank you and goodbye